and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. So now we come to light our Advent gift. The candles finally came. <laughs> First Sunday of Advent we only had one candle, but now we've got them all. Um, so we're lighting the fourth candle. Poor people at home, I'm just looking at the side of me. People of God, be glad. Your God delights in you, giving you joy for sadness and turning the dark to light. Be strong in hope, therefore, for your God comes to save. You are God's children. Lord, make us one in the love of Christ, today and forever. Amen. Please be seated. <laughs> when the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So let us pray this week's collect together. God, our Redeemer, who prepared the Blessed Virgin Mary to be the mother of your Son, grant that as she looked for his coming as our Saviour, so we may be ready to greet him when he comes again as our judge, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. So now we have our reading to scripture. The first reading is from 2 Samuel, chapter 7. Now when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David. Thus says the Lord, are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant, David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to the prince over my people. And I have been with you wherever you went and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place, and be disturbed no more, and neither doers shall afflict them no more. As formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people of Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Romans 16. Now to God who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed and through prophetic writings is made known to all Gentiles according to the command of the eternal God to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God through Jesus Christ to whom be the glory forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. They stand for the gospel reading. <laughs> alleluia, alleluia, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Alleluia. alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one, the Lord is with you. She was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy and will be called Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who is said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The story of Gabriel's visit to Mary, what we rather grandly call the Annunciation, is one of the most intimate encounters we find in the Bible so intimate that it has inspired countless works of art. Mary is very often depicted in a domestic setting at home. Luke doesn't tell us where the encounter actually happened in his gospel though. And Gabriel breaks in to bring the most startling news. The word translated in our Bible as perplexed could be better translated as terrified, which makes a lot more sense to me. But it is a strange, and wonderful and intimate encounter of Mary with heaven, with a messenger of God. An encounter that would have stayed with her through her life. I was struck hearing the reading again this year how Mary encounters God right where she is. She is not like Zechariah, John the Baptist's father, who we read about in the preceding chapter, in the temple, the Holy of Holies, she is at home, in a humble setting, just going about her day-to-day -day business. And it is right there that she encounters the Holy Spirit. For much of 2020, we have not been able to be in church. We have not been able to worship in the way we usually do. But we have, perhaps, discovered that we can encounter God wherever we are, whether at home or out on a walk. God is not confined to buildings or particular places. We can meet with God anywhere 
and many of the most profound experiences of God in the Bible are not where one would expect. There is Jacob's dream of the ladder to heaven when he is sleeping under the stars with his head resting on a rock. There is Elijah's encounter in the cave where God is not in the earthquake, wind or fire, but in the still small voice of calm. There is the experience of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego in the fiery furnace. They encounter God there, of all places. And then we have Mary meeting Gabriel. And following that, the shepherds keeping watch over their flocks by night. The shepherds meet God at work. So in 2020, this truth that we can encounter God in the most unexpected of places has been amplified for us. Rather than focus on what we are not able to do this year, let us be open to encountering God wherever we are. Gabriel's visit to Mary foreshadows what will become true for the whole human race, that each one of us will know God intimately, will know God's presence deep within us by the Holy Spirit. Mary is the first to truly be filled with the Holy Spirit, but it is not an easy encounter it is terrifying and the message is strange. Mary questions how on earth it could happen, but then, at hearing the message she would have known from her Hebrew scriptures, nothing is impossible with God, she assents. She opens herself to God. She makes herself truly vulnerable to receive God. Gabriel gives her one bit of information that will help her to know if what he has said is true, that her sister, not sister, her relative, Elizabeth, is pregnant. So after this encounter with Gabriel, she goes as soon as possible to visit Elizabeth to see if it is really true, which of course she discovers and joy breaks forth and she sings what we come to know as the Magnificat, my soul magnifies the Lord. But all this happens after she says yes to God. The consent has to come first. The faith in God's promises comes first. For an encounter like the Annunciation, I find that poetry is needed. So I will finish now with a poem by Denise Levitov. It is inspired by an orthodox hymn that says, Hail, space for the uncontained God. We know the scene, the room, variously furnished. Almost always a lectern, a book, always the tall lily. Arrived on solemn grandeur of great wings, the angelic ambassador standing or hovering, whom she acknowledges a guest. But we are told of meek obedience. No one mentions courage. The engendering spirit did not enter her without consent. God waited. She was free to accept or to refuse, choice integral to humanness. Aren't there annunciations of one sort or another in most lives? Some unwillingly undertake great destinies, enact them in sullen pride, uncomprehending. More often those moments, when roads of light and storm open from darkness in a man or woman, are turned away from in dread, in a wave of weakness, in despair and with relief. Ordinary lives continue. God does not smite them. But the gates close. The pathway vanishes. She had been a child who played, ate, slept, like any other child, but unlike others, wept only for pity, laughed in joy, not triumph. Compassion and intelligence fused in her, indivisible. Called to a destiny more momentous than any in all of time, she did not quail. Only asked a simple, how can this be? And gravely, courteously, took to heart the angel's reply. The astounding ministry she was offered. To bear in her womb infinite weight and lightness to carry in hidden infinite inwardness nine months of eternity, to contain in slender vase of being 
the sum of power in narrow flesh, the sum of light. Then bring to birth, push out into air, a man-child, needing like any other milk and love, but who was God? This was the moment no one speaks of, when she could still refuse, a breath unbreathed, spirit suspended, waiting. She did not cry, I cannot, I am not worthy, nor I have not the strength. She did not submit with gritted teeth, raging, coerced. Bravest of all humans, consent illumined her. The room filled with its light, the lily glowed in it, and the iridescent wings. Consent, courage unparalleled, opened her utterly. Please, would you stand as you are able as we come to declare our faith in the words of the Lord. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please sit or kneel as we come to pray. Gracious God, you came to our world to fulfil your promises of old, your word embodied in a child lying in a manger. You loved us so much that you staked everything to break down the barriers that keep us from you. You shared our humanity from birth to death, so that with you we might share your eternity, life in all its fullness. You became God with us, so that we might become one with you. Teach us that as you needed Mary's response then, you long for our response now, our willingness to accept your mercy and to experience the blessings you so long to give us. Come again and now be born in our hearts so that we may truly love you and joyfully serve you this and every day. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for those that may not notice Christmas. It will just be another day of surviving, looking for shelter, trying to keep warm. So we pray for the homeless and the refugees everywhere. We pray for those that don't enjoy Christmas and just want it over. So we pray for the lonely and for those whom Christmas brings painful memories. This Christmas will be very different for all of us, not being able to see the people we would like to, 
and not being able to hug and kiss our loved ones. Be with us all, Lord, in these very uncertain and dark times. Sustain and support us, and lift up all who are brought low. Help us to help wherever we can. Enfold us all in your ever-loving arms, and help us to know that joy will come again. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mary recognised your promise of mercy, Lord, so we ask now for your mercy on all those who are ill, whether at home or in hospital, those seriously ill with COVID, those starting a long road to recovery from it, those who have had vital treatments postponed. We pray for all the doctors, nurses and healthcare workers around the world who put their own lives at risk to care for their patients. And we pray for the scientists working so hard on vaccines. We bring before you now, Lord, all those that we know in our communities that need our prayers. Wyatt and Garrett Ruffin, Barbara Needham, Veronica Blackwell, Margaret and Jill Gilmore, Jim Gilmore, Luke Fur. Sandra Mellor, Chloe Parks, Betty Wood, George Naylor, Elizabeth Hamilton, Robert Verity, Lily Wood, Richard Abbess, John Tuckwood, Peter Widdardson, Margaret Malpass, Jackie Piercy, Roger Street, Ben Sinclair. And those mourning the loss of a loved one, made harder at this time by not always being able to say goodbye as we would like. Thinking of the family and friends of Betty Graham, Andrea Webster, Ernest Burton and Catherine Quirk. Along with those known personally to us, in a moment of quiet, we bring them all before you now, Lord. Lord, reach into all broken lives. Bring joy where there is sorrow, healing where there is hurt, hope where there is despair, and peace where there is turmoil. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, with all your people in every generation and every part of the world, we praise your name and give thanks for all the love poured on us. The love of man and wife, the love of parent and child, love between friends, the love that binds us together as Christians. May we never be ungrateful of the love offered to us, but value it as a gift, which is priceless. You came from the highest and reached down to the lowest. What a message of love. You came from the kindest to suffer for the cruelest. You are the message of love. In the bustle of the main street, the noise and the concrete, make us your message of love. In the turmoil of nations or a heart's desperation, make us your message of love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much for those beautiful prayers, Sue. So please would you stand for the peace. <laughs> In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high shall break upon us to give light to those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So we greet each other with a sign of peace without touching each other. <laughs> 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 That's related. Peace be with you all.
gather all our prayers together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so now we come to our act of spiritual communion. You may wish to change your posture, you may wish to kneel as if you're kneeling at the altar rail. You may wish to hold your hands out with your palms facing upwards to receive the Holy Spirit. In union, dear Father, with Christian people throughout the world and across the centuries gathered to make Eucharist, hearing your holy word and receiving the precious body and blood, I offer you praise and thanksgiving. Even though I am exiled from tasting the bread of heaven and drinking the cup of life, I pray that you will unite me with all the baptized and with your Son who gave his life for us. Come, Lord Jesus. Dwell in me, and send your Holy Spirit, that I may be filled with your presence. I will leave a time of silence for you to pray this prayer yourself.
So now I'm just going to give a final blessing. May God himself, the God of peace, make you perfect and holy and keep you safe and blameless in spirit, soul and body for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Our Lord says, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. May the Lord, when he comes, find us watching and waiting. Amen. Sorry about that, everyone. Sorry that you missed the communion part of the service this morning because I forgot to plug my phone in. Hopefully that won't happen again and I'll see you online soon. Bye.